Good evening and welcome to the New York City News Network. Tonight we're going to be taking a deeper look into the ongoing debate over the inner workings of Tammany Hall. Our man on the ground, Stephen Brochu, will be interviewing two of Tammany Hall's most prominent officials, William Boss Tweed and George Plunkett. In addition, we'll be interviewing Thomas Nast, a cartoonist for Harper's Weekly who has dedicated a great portion of his efforts to exposing supposed corruption within Tammany Hall. Now over to you, Stephen. Thanks, John. I'm here with Mr. William Tweed. Thank you for being here, Mr. Tweed. My pleasure, Mr. Brochu. I have a couple questions I'd like to ask you concerning Tammany Hall and yourself. First, can you tell us a little bit about how you became such an influential figure? Of course, of course. Now, uh, as not many people know, my beginnings were quite humble, much like many of our fair citizens in the city. I began as a simple fire company volunteer when I was younger, and then I was asked by the Democratic Party to run on their ticket for the 7th Ward Alderman's position, which I accepted and subsequently won. From there on, I served a term of two years with the House of Representatives, and then returned to be appointed to the New York City Board of Supervisors, where I was able to come up with and levy a 15% tax on any vendor attempting to do business with the state of New York, which in turn increased our city's revenue in the long run. After that, I was uh, appointed to the Tammany Hall General Committee, where I was able to work my way through the ranks like any honest man and become the grand satrum you see sitting before you today. As of late, there have been many accusations concerning corruption within Tammany Hall. How would you respond to that? Well, I would respond by saying they're completely and utterly unfounded accusations, though bizarre. They love to tell me, all my opponents, boy, sweet, you know everybody. No, I don't know that many people, honestly. I only know the governor, the New York City recorder, the New York City district attorney, and the New York City comptroller. That's all the people I know. However, you cannot criticize our administration because what we have done is put the power back where it belongs in City Hall. And with my new charter, we have been able to appoint good Tammany Hall men to the 15 aldermanic positions all around the city of New York. After that, we were also able to put our city's finances under a board of audit, which means more people watching your money and making sure it goes where it needs to. We've also been able to look at our business achievements and to look at the thriving condition of our city now. If you look at the contractors, they've never been better paid, never been better employed. We've been able to build the New York City Courthouse. We've been able to renovate the entire Upper East Side. It's a beauty. You should go down and see it someday. And we've also been able to build the Brooklyn Bridge, which opens up the entire city of Brooklyn to our fair city of New York. And you might ask yourself, Boss Tweed, how could it be possible for you to achieve all these things with a corrupt system? The answer is, we're not corrupt. There's no way we could have achieved anything of what we've done if somebody had been pocketing money along the way. And what effects do you think people like Thomas Nest have on yourself and Tammany Hall? Oh, well, Thomas Nest, Thomas Nest. Don't give me any Thomas Nest. Thomas Nest is not an intelligent person. Now, you see, I'm the boss. I'm the one in charge. I know what's going on. And what's going on is that with this long list of accomplishments, there's absolutely no way anybody could be pocketing money along the way because there was no way we could have achieved anything if that had been happening. So that is my message to Mr. Thomas Nast and all his supporters. Thank you, Mr. Tweed. Back to you, John. Thanks, Stephen. And now we'll be going over to Stephen Brochu, who will be interviewing George Plunkett, another of Tammany Hall's most prominent officials, and the true brains behind the entire operation. Over to you, Stephen. Thank you, Mr. Plunkett. I only have a few questions to ask you. First, there have been a lot of accusations and discontentment with the alleged corruption in Tammany Hall. What do you have to say to these accusations? Well, Stephen, I see my opportunities and I take them. Many do accuse us at Tammany Hall for corruption, but they fail to distinguish between a dishonest graft and an honest one. Many in politics do become wealthy, and yes, myself included, but not through a dishonest graft, such as blackmailing or gambling or saloon keeping or disorderly conduct. But what you have to do, you have to turn your eyes to the books. The books are always right. And the books say that the heads of the departments are looking after their friends and giving them opportunities. And this, this is what any honest man would do, any good man takes care of his friends. I myself, if I had something that I would like to give away in private, I would give it to my friend. If I do this in my private life, then what's to hold me back from doing it in my public life? Can you give me an example of a so-called questionable circumstance that which you would consider an honest graph? Well, for instance, the city was repairing an old street and 
that had a couple hundred thousand granite blocks that they were going to sell. And when the auction rolled around, I went up to my opponents and I asked them, how many of the stones are you looking to buy? And one of them said 20,000, one of them said 15,000, and another, the rest, said 10,000. And I said to them, let me buy all of the stones, let me buy the lot, and I'll give you your shares for nothing, for free. And of course they all agreed. And when the auctioneer yelled out, how am I going to, what bid am I going to get for these fine paving stones? I raised my hand and I said, two dollars and fifty cents. And the auctioneer screamed out, two dollars and fifty cents. That's a joke, give me a real bid. And he soon found out that it wasn't a joke. My rivals all stood silent, not a word. And so I got the lot for two dollars and fifty cents. And I gave them their shares, each of their shares. And this was not a dishonest graft. This was smart business and an honest graft. And in conclusion, I'd like to say that I do not own a dishonest dollar. And if my enemy, my worst enemy, were to write my epitaph after I'm gone, the only thing he could say was George W. Plunkett. He's seen his opportunities and he took them. Thank you, Mr. Plunkett, for your time. My pleasure. Back to you, John. Thanks again, Stephen. And due to budget cuts, we are again going over to Stephen Brochu, who will be interviewing Thomas Nast. Over to you, Steve. Thanks again, John. Now, Mr. Nast, I understand you're a political cartoonist for the Harper's Weekly, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Over the past year, we've noticed that the majority of your political cartoons have been attacking Tammany Hall. Why is this? Well, that's very true, Stephen. And if I'm going to be completely frank with you, I must say, Tammany Hall is the most corrupt organization I have ever laid eyes on. Now, Boss Tweed will incessantly sing the praises of New York's financial position and its oversight by his audit committee. However, this one man, Boss Tweed, has the entirety of the New York government under his thumb. He controls the courts, the finance, and the aldermanic positions. Now, the level of extortion we see in Boss Tweed's government is something that is absolutely unprecedented. Take, for example, the, new, the construction of the New York City Courthouse. Now, this courthouse, over the six years of its construction, costed $13 million, which is twice the amount we paid for Alaska in the Alaska Purchase. Now, the carpenter in this building was paid $360,000 in a building which barely required carpentry. And the plasterer was paid $130,000 for two days of work. And in the aftermath of this, Tweed's comptroller, Dick Connolly, refused to show the public the accounting books. Now, if this does not scream extortion and corruption, I don't know what does. And what do you hope to accomplish by drawing these political cartoons? Well, in every cartoon I draw, I strive to bring the public attention to the corruption and the extortion in Tweed's administration in hopes that they will see it with clear and open eyes and remove the power from these men who have swindled them out of millions and millions of dollars and throw them in prison where they belong. Now, the evidence of my work's success has been seen in the recent attempt by Boss Tweed himself to bribe me for $100,000 to stop printing my unsavory cartoons. Needless to say, his efforts have been entirely wasted. Thank you again, Mr. Nast. You're welcome. This wraps up tonight's segment on Tammany Hall. Tune in next time as we explore the mysterious lack of funding within our own organization. This is John Madigan signing off on NYCN. Hello, Dr. Kelleher's AP U.S. History class. Hi, Dr. Kelleher's AP Push class. Hi, Dr. Kelleher's AP U.S. History class. Kelleher's AP U.S. History class. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Kelleher's A Push class. Hi, Mr. Kelleher's A Push class. I have the biggest problem okay. with that. Yes, dear. Say hi, Dr. Kelleher's A Push class. Hi, Dr. Kelleher's A Push class. That's cute. I'm so hi. cute. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hey, everyone, in Dr. Kelleher's A Push class. Hi, Dr. Kelleher's A Push class. Say hi. Okay, go. <laughs> Well, that was, I don't know.
Hola, Dr. Kelly Hurst, AP U.S. History Class. Hola, Dr. Kelly Hurst, AP U.S. History Class. Hola, Dr. Heli Kelly Hurst, AP U.S. History Class. Hola, Dr. Kelly Hurst, AP U.S. History Class. Una, dos, tres, tres. Hola, Dr. Kelly Hurst, AP U.S. History Class. Hey there, Dr. Kelly Hurst. I think you should give these boys some extra credit, because I got a Willows. And they actually have friends from Willows, what a surprise.